Hello and welcome to another edition of Rugby Nation on rugby.com.au and it feels just a little bit special because finally we are good to go for the first round of Super Rugby AU and I know rugby.com.au's Beth Newman can't wait to get the footy cranked up again. Beth, welcome to you. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, cannot wait for this weekend. It's been a long three months without footy, that's for sure. Yes, it is good to be talking about the footy. There's no doubt about that. Our, our special guest on Rugby Nation this week, and no doubt he will be keeping a close eye on the weekend's action. Wallabies coach Dave Rennie, a very warm welcome to you, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Nick, and, uh, and good to see Beth again too. And, and Dave, you're um, in New Zealand at the moment, Um out of isolation, what, what have you been up to and, and what are the plans going forward over there? Yeah, well, we've, uh, we've been a week out of isolation, um, uh, which we did at Ridges in Auckland, which was outstanding, to be honest. It's as good as we could have hoped for. Um, yeah, so we've been down here. We spent the week with family and had a great weekend. Uh, uh, went out for dinner with the kids and the grandkids and played a bit of cards and uh, a fair bit of banter going on. So uh, that was good. It was a great weekend. Very nice. So there's so much to talk to you about, Dave. So we're going to do that over the next uh, half an hour or so. But before we get too far down the track, Beth, um, it gets, you know, really real now for the players and the coaches. There is a bit of rugby news going around uh, and a couple of really significant moments this week in Australian rugby. I guess the biggest news of all was that the immediate future of the game uh, was secured with that revised pay deal between Rupert on behalf of the players and, and Rugby Australia. That's a, a big relief, I think, for all involved. Maybe not ideal for all involved, but a relief nevertheless. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think everyone wanted to avoid another kind of, um, you know, drawn out sort of negotiation. And um, with the Super Rugby AU competition um, confirmed earlier, or in June confirmed, and the original agreement, which was signed up for in April, was, you know, an average of 60% um, cuts across the, the professional playing base. But with actual games scheduled now, that was due for renegotiation. And, and on Wednesday night, um, Rupert and Rugby Australia kind of announced that uh, that players would be across the board um, taking a 30% pay cut just up until September 30. And then when the Wallabies schedule is confirmed, that'll be, that'll be looked at again. Um, you know, there was some reports early on in the process that players were talking about, you know, potential strikes and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, two days out from the first game of Super Rugby AU of relief for everybody to have a little bit of certainty for the next three months. And, um, you know, and as you said, not, not ideal, but, you know, everyone's kind of having to make sacrifices and, and the players obviously understand that and are, and are taking that on board. Yeah, I reckon that sort of stuff plays on players' minds as well. So to be able to concentrate on footy now is, is huge. Um, the other really quirky story, not quirky, but I guess it's commonplace now with the way the world is, but the Rebels, with what's happening in Melbourne, another 77 cases today, um, their, their uncertain future over the next few weeks is really interesting. I mean, you know, where are they going to be based? Where are they going to be played? All that sort of stuff. Looking at now a minimum of two weeks um, in Canberra, their round two game that was supposed to be in Melbourne against the Reds um, has already been uh, moved and probably will be played in Sydney or somewhere in New South Wales. And I mean, with the restrictions that the Queensland government announced earlier this week, um, you know, saying that Queensland sporting teams who play against the team, not even just teams from Melbourne, but anyone who's been in Melbourne for, you know, have to, when they go back to Queensland, then have to isolate for two weeks. So, you know, when you start looking at those timeframes, you know, you're starting to look into the chance that the Rebels may have to, you know, be away for the entire season. I mean, it's only a, a 10, 12 week season. So, it's very uncertain at the moment, but um, but for now in Canberra, and very lucky that, that they did go to Canberra on Friday um, so that they can get that round two game against the Reds in without anyone having to quarantine. But, you know, a very, you know, un unfortunate situation for them in some ways that, you know, that they just don't know what they're going to be doing for the next eight weeks or so. Yeah, crazy times, but uh, they are not Robinson Crusoe at the moment. There's a, a bit going on. Dave, um, I'll bring you in here. How significant, back to that pay deal, and I, and I know that you know, you're, not, you're not closely involved with that sort of stuff, but it is significant for what you're trying to achieve. You want happy, contented players who are uh, all in on the cause, and, and clearly a, a decent pay deal helps. Yeah, I, look, I must admit, they, uh, the guys I've been speaking to have been excellent. Um, Right back when uh, the negotiations started, they all understood that, um, you know, everyone's hurting all over the world. There's lots of people who have lost lives and lost jobs. So uh, pay cuts are a commonplace at the moment. And 
they understood that you know the future of the game depended on everyone taking a bit of a hit. So, uh, but it's great. Look, we're back playing footy now. Um, you know, assume everyone's happier. And I spoke to the coaches and uh, of the Super Rugby size. They didn't feel it was an issue. The boys are really focused on the footy, and we're confident that they're going to get a positive resolution, which they have. Because there's been so much off-field discussion around Australian rugby the last few months, Dave. You know, we've spoken to a few teams that are just happy to be talking about rugby and get some positive things going. Is that kind of how you're feeling about, you know, this weekend and, and the competition getting up and running? Yeah, you know, there's often controversial stuff in the media in Australia and, um, you know, there hasn't been much else to talk about, has there? So, um, yeah, look, fantastic. Um, I know teams and players have worked really hard and uh, they're all jumping out of their skin to, to get underway this weekend. It's interesting, Dave. It, you know, obviously the big difference is it's it's domestic. It's five Australian teams playing against each other, and over the years we've kind of measured ourselves against Kiwi teams in particular, to an extent, of course, South Africans. But it's that rivalry across the Tasman. But not having that trans-Tasman rivalry is that um, a positive or a negative for Australian rugby this year as we head towards the Bledisloe, which will be uh, huge. Yeah, look, it's a positive that we're back playing. And this was the only way it was going to happen. Um, I, look, I think playing New Zealand size and playing the All Blacks as often as possible is good for Australian rugby. And, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, the Brumbies uh, tipped over the Chiefs. Uh, Rebels tipped over the Highlanders. Uh, um, Reds should have beaten the Crusaders, scored four four tries unconverted that day. So, um Oh, I just think the more we play them and the more success we have against them at Super Rugby level, the better from a national perspective. But it is what it is. Um, it's just great to be playing. And, you know, as it turns out, every weekend's a national trial, isn't it? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what the, the exciting thing about the competition is, isn't it? As you say, Dave. And, and from that Wallabies perspective, I mean, you've got the um, Pony squad that you guys kind of established earlier in the year. But, but how, you know, important will this competition be in really seeing where guys are sitting? Yeah, still an open door for everyone. Um, we, we picked a group after about three rounds, and the idea was um, you know, we wanted to include some young guys who we think uh, will potentially wear the jersey in the future. Um, so looking you know, ahead to the next few years and into a World Cup in 2023, uh, we obviously wanted to pick on form, uh, but it was a chance for us to get a connection with those guys. and. Uh, give feedback on where they're at, what we're looking for, and um, and do a bit of work on them and get them to do um, a bit of analysis for us. So, uh, so that's been really good. Um, we've some guys have dropped out of that process, and others have come in. And um, you know, the next three months is a great opportunity for guys to stake claims for um, you know a Wallaby jersey against the All Blacks is probably the most likely scenario at this stage. Dave, what are your key metrics when you're looking at the? Well, I was going to say kids. I mean, they, they seem like kids to to us, but um, but yeah, you know, for the younger players who are trying to make a, a name and trying to catch your attention, what are the things they need to be doing? I mean, the, the first thing that catches your eye is is their on field ability, um, and then beyond that, we start digging deeper. So it varies in what position you play, clearly, um, but then we start looking at character and we start looking at work ethic and coachability and so on. So. Uh, that's what's impressed me with a lot of the young boys we've been talking to. Um, des- desperate to be better, uh, prepared to work hard, uh, keen for feedback. Um, you know, so it, it's exciting. They're getting opportunities as young men because there's a lot of more established players who have headed overseas in recent years. And uh, it, it's great for the future of the game. We've got some really good kids coming through. And I, I know you guys don't like to single out any players or anything like that, but you talk about those young guys. Who are some of the guys that have really impressed you and that you, you're you going to be really, you know, watching closely? Yeah, no, you're right, Beth. I, I don't really like singling people out because, yeah, very, very, you leave leave a couple of people out and upset people. But um, I love, obviously, there's been a lot of talk around 10 um, with, with the departure of a lot of experienced 10s over the last couple of years. And, um, so Noah and Will, you know, two young kids who have, um, are starting uh, for their provinces and uh, performing really well. I think the fact they've had six rounds uh, and perform really well, it'll give them a lot of confidence to come in and, and run the ship um, in this phase of the comp. So, you know, um, like I say, there's a lot of other good young men who we're, we're talking to and, and watching closely, but uh, exciting to have a couple of really good young teens and, and there's 
there's others coming through too. So um, I think it's a position that we'll, we'll end up with a lot of depth in. Dave, there was a great quote from Will Harrison from the TARS this week in the paper. And he, he says he hasn't met you yet, but he described you. I'm, I'm quoting here. He says, yeah, he's a cool dude. Um, he's on WhatsApp. He's got no dramas if I speak to him. Uh, he's a really welcoming uh, sort of bloke. One of the fellas I'd be happy to have a chat to. So Will Harris is clearly not a senior player, but clearly feels that he can go to you. And is that the is that the sort of thing you want to be happening in Australian rugby, no matter who it is, no matter where they are, if they feel that they want to have a chat to the national coach, that that you're there and open for it? Yeah, I'm still getting over your first comment about cold dudes. No, no, that was his comment. <laughs> What, uh, so what all head coaches want uh, to be referred to us. Um, I look, uh, the key thing is around trying to get a connection. Um, you know, I've, if you look at that, the whole squad, uh, potentially, there's a lot of guys I've coached against, um, but haven't coached. And a lot of the young boys coming through, it's, you know, what we're trying to do is get a connection and get an understanding of, um, you know, uh, like where their game's at, uh, their rugby now, and their work ethic and, and so on and so on. So, um, yeah, so I've made sure that you know, we've been in constant contact with that that group of guys, and um, you know we're trying to work in with the Super Rugby coaches because you know they've got a comp that they're working through to win. Uh, our job is to try and support that, but um, yeah, look, like, I, I think you know it's good that Will feels he can he can be open and talk and so on and so on. So um, yeah, look, it, it hasn't been ideal. Ideally, I would have been in Australia. From January and doing a lot of those connections face to face, so we've we've made do with uh, with WhatsApp and Zoom at the moment. It's interesting how you talk a lot about that communication. It's something a lot of guys have brought up about this new Wallabies coaching group that you guys are really open and and um, in contact and, and that sort of thing. And I guess guys like Scott Wiseman or Matt Taylor, how important have they been for you? You know, given that you haven't been able to to come to Australia for a little while. Yeah, they've been massive. They've done a fantastic job. Um, so I was spending a lot of days away from home, obviously, initially, uh, getting around the country and chipping in and helping out. And that, that was that was our uh, brief, really. Uh, we didn't want to tell the, the coaches who to play and how to play. Uh, our job was to support them. And uh, so they've been great. They've been really um, uh, easy to work with and, um, and appreciative of the help that they've been getting. And so uh, with Tatsy and Wisey, they've, um, they've been fantastic. It's been really important. So that's helped drive the connection face-to-face. And um, yeah, so I, we're, we're in a pretty good place considering. Dave, um, George Gregan often talks about uh, that, that golden era, sort of late, late 90s, early 2000s that, that the Wallabies enjoyed and Australia enjoyed so much. Um, and he, he tells a story about that group of players. There were, there were a lot in that group who had beaten the junior All Blacks in, in the years prior to that. And he said it was always comforting in some way to, to stand across and watch the Harker and eyeball a couple of those guys and know that you'd had success at some stage. Now, we've got a similar situation with the under-20s, having had a degree of success against the junior All Blacks over the last couple of years. And those players are now going to come through and they're, they're going to probably form a, a key part of what you're trying to do over the next couple of years. How important is that? Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's massive. Um, yeah, um, you know, often you know, we, we've got a handful of guys who have been playing for a long time in a Wallaby jersey still haven't won a Bledisloe Cup. And so um, I think having having young men in the group who who don't have that fear, um, they're not scarred by by the past, um, you know, they, they know they can just go out and play and, and regardless of who, who's in front of them, they can be successful. So... Um, yeah, look, beliefs are a massive um, part of our focus over the next period. We, we know we need to be really well conditioned because that's that's the thing with all black sides. Uh, they're highly skilled, but they're very, very fit. Um, and so um, it's been a real focus on us. And then trying to extend their skill sets, you know, through their sub, super rugby um, clubs and so on. So, um, yeah, yeah, look, um, it, it's certainly a focus for us. And in terms of that as well, um, you know, what can you do with the Super Rugby clubs to, to to improve that going into, given that you probably won't have much time between that comp and, and whenever tests start later in the year? Yeah, it's, it's always been important to get a strong connection with with the clubs because, I mean, they have those athletes for a big chunk of the time. 
uh, we're not going to be able to make much of a difference from a skill set and conditioning point of view in, in two or three weeks. Um, so yeah, so that, that's that's been a, a massive focus for us, and um, yeah, we're pleased to say that uh, they've got the boys working hard, and and hopefully we'll see the benefit of that over the next few weeks. Certainly, the uh, the Kiwi sides came back really fit, um, and it showed in their first game. So uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to see that this weekend. Uh, you're going to be watching, I imagine, a, a lot of rugby over the next few weeks. Um, can you give us a sense of when you might be able to be on the ground here and and actually watching these games, you know, live and 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 mixing with those players face to face? Yeah, um, I mean, hopefully it's mid July, so a couple of weeks away. Uh, I've got a son graduating from police college. I'm pretty keen to be there for that, and then and then Steph and I will head over. Um, do what we have to do from an isolation point of view. And and then, you know, hopefully the borders start relaxing. I can actually get around and get face-to-face -face with all the clubs. Um, obviously, there's some challenges around the Rebels um, and then being on the road and, and so on. So uh, wherever they are, that's where I'll be heading as well. So, you know, nice to have the force involved again too. So we're going to see a few extra players playing, which, which helps create... Um, more depth and more competition for places. And um, it's been a bit of conversation this week from New Zealand about the uh, the North v South game. Have you got any plans for some sort of kind of Wallabies trial or anything like that on top of on top of Super Rugby AU? We, we did talk about it, you know, under the original format, uh, trying to have a, a, a head out um, prior to playing the Irish test. But um, the All Blacks games or I guess the New Zealand um, you know, Aotearoa Super Rugby has started three weeks earlier uh, by not having playoffs. So those guys are going to go back in and play um, NPC by the looks of it, uh, have a North-South game and so on. So, um, you know, we're going to, by the time we play a final, we're, we're three weeks away from a test um, the way it's looking. So, um, yeah, so ultimately we'll just come straight in. We'll, we'll treat all those... Um, big super games as, as trials to give us clarity on selection. Another thing that's been kicked around, Dave, was uh, a concept of, you know, for whatever future competition is is decided uh, from next year onwards, maybe uh, getting agreement to allow the movement of players within that competition, you know, Kiwis to play in Australia, Australians to play in New Zealand, you know, and likewise South Africa if they're involved. Do you have a thought on uh, on that while, while while retaining their test eligibility, obviously? So, do, do you have a thought on that and whether it might benefit uh, teams overall? Yeah, I, I quite like the concept, um, and the reason I say that is because you're comparing apples with apples. Um, you know, when you got guys playing in France, um, you've got some excellent clubs who work hard over there, but there's a number of them who don't spend anywhere enough time on the grass. And to pick a player out of there to play test for his uh, massive step up. So, um, but you know, if they're playing in our comp, if they're playing in a you know a South African side or a or a Kiwi side or um, or whatever, um, at least we're seeing them play against the best Australian players, and then you know, we can make a decision around selection. So, I, look, I'd be open to that. I think if you get the old guy playing for an, for a Kiwi side, I'm, I'm not sure how welcoming they'll be, but. <laughs> uh, be good for those players too because you know playing with good players you learn a lot um, and so maybe it breaks down a little bit of a psyche so um, I, I think it'll be positive and I guess what about the flip side do you think you know if say New Zealand adopted a similar um, policy you know potentially having a guy like a Bowden Barrett or something playing for the Waratahs like how would you feel about you know the, the flip side of that equation yeah, look, I think um, New Zealand's always had a policy around foreign players. It's, it's mixed and mingled over the last few years, but ultimately um, there's an allowance for Pacific Island boys. Um, so normally a couple of players, and, and a number of those guys are often born in New Zealand, but they haven't made the All Blacks. They've chosen to play for Samoa or Fiji, and um, so still been eligible to play a Super Rugby there. And then maybe one foreigner like a, like a Michael Leach, who we had at the Chiefs. So... Um, I just think it needs to be kept. Um, if you've, if you're bringing in, you know, a Bowden Barrett, um, then you can't bring in any other teams at the other clubs because we've got to make sure that there's opportunities for our young men um, and our players to um, to excel. So, you know, you, you'd only have one in one spot. 
Hey, uh, I'm just thinking it might be a good point. Beth, should we have a quick look at uh, what is coming up Super Rugby AU-wise this weekend, getting started Friday night, the Reds and, and the Tars? And uh, it was interesting from both camps, it was a bit of chest beating, you know, a bit of bit of old school. Let's, let's get a bit of punch on happening. I'm not sure that that will actually happen. We've heard it all before, but, gee, there's two sides, I think, are just so hungry to get out there, aren't they? Yeah, I think like hearing Liam Wright, the Queensland captain, talk this week and saying that Queensland loves to smash New South Wales, you just don't hear enough of it in rugby. So it's exciting that players are kind of happy to to throw out those lines, you know, Paul Gallen going to talk to the Waratahs and that sort of thing. Um, you know, and it's the perfect way to kick off this competition, I think. Queensland versus New South Wales, it's such a big rivalry. Um, and I'm interested to know from your perspective, Dave, what, what's your perspective on, on that interstate rivalry? Are you a State of Origin fan or, you know, what, what, what do you see about that sort of, um, you know, the, the ferocity, ferociousness of that um, rivalry? Yeah, look, it's, it's positive and it's positive for the brand. It's, I guess it's positive for the players. Look, I know from a New Zealand perspective, uh, there's no love lost, um, you know, when, you know, the Chiefs play, the Crusaders and that sort of thing. So... Uh, players get up for that. You've got to have personal meaning. And so that's what we want to see in all of these um, these derbies over the next three months. It's, um, you know, people working hard for each other and uh, pride in the jersey and pride in the estate and so on. So um, oh, the more the better, I reckon. And the next generation is on show at, at Ballymore. Well, not at Ballymore, sorry, at Suncorp Stadium. Uh, you know, that, that New South Wales team is just um, chock full of 19 and 20-year-olds and, and some of the brightest stars in the game wearing the Reds jersey as well. It's exciting. Yeah. I mean, the great thing from a Waratah perspective, obviously, um, you know, they've had some, um, you know, well-established players who have either moved on or uh, injured at the moment. And so a great chance for those young guys to come through. I know they've worked really hard. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see. And then what we know is out of Queensland – Enormous amount of talent uh, coming out of there. And um, so, yes, yeah, so it's a massive matchup. Uh, looking forward to it. And then the Brumbies and the Rebels on Saturday night in a very uh, chilly Canberra, Beth. Yeah, I think it's uh, getting down to freezing around that time of night in Canberra at this time of year. But, um, but it'll be really exciting to see these teams go out. They've just announced their lineups today. Um, probably one of the disappointing things is Tom Banks is going to miss with a foot injury, but um, but it gives an opportunity for um, Mac Hansen to, to get his first start. Um, and the Rebels have got a, a bit of a new look forward pack. Um, another 21-year-old in Josh Kemeny starting at six there. And um, yeah, it'll be really interesting. Um, and probably the, the biggest battle is is the 10, Noah, Leslie, look, Noah, who we spoke about earlier, sorry, and Matt Tamua, the incumbent Wallabies 10. And, um, you know, Dave, how excited are you to see those guys go off against each other? Yeah, no, that would be a really good matchup. Uh, both of them play really flat and play on top of defences. Um, got really good skill sets to make late decisions. So uh, they'll play an important part. Um, obviously, uh, Matt Tamur has played a fair bit of footy in Canberra in the middle of winter, so he'll he'll understand the uh, the conditions and so on. So yeah, look, it's um, it'd be interesting to see how much footy's played. Uh, won't, won't be easy conditions, but. Uh, two really good sides. I, I've been really impressed with the Rebels. They've come back in great nick. A lot of PBs around their conditioning. Um, yeah, so their, their leaders have done a really good job, their, their coaching staff and, and training staff. And so, um, you know, and just to see how they go over the next few weeks. But they've certainly got themselves in really good condition. Yeah, just looking for that uh, consistency uh, that has been a little bit elusive over the last couple of years um just before well we should mention too the force with the buy in the first round so they have to wait yet another week to uh to rejoin uh super rugby after a, a couple of years out um just before we let you go dave just from a, a lifestyle point of view what do you want to do when you get to australia where, where do you want to go you're not going to have a lot of spare time but when you do have some spare time what are the things that you want to check out and and uh and really be a part of here um, got to find a house first. That's that's the important thing as far as the wife's concerned. Um, we've got dogs that are um, they're arriving mid August. We've got furniture arriving from um, from the UK in mid August. So uh, so that that's probably top of the list from her perspective. But I look at um, I think one of the things I loved about Scotland we we travelled all over Scotland, had a decent look, and got to meet some great people and see some. Yeah, amazing history and um, so keen to get around Aussie. I've I don't know, I've probably been there a hundred times as a 
over various things, but most of them are for rugby where you, you're in, you spend a couple of days and you're back out and don't get the chance to spend a lot of time there. But a few holidays with the kids around uh, Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast and that sort of thing. So I've got a lot of rallies in, in Melbourne and, um, and a lot in, uh, in Queensland. So uh, it'd be great to see a lot more of them too. So yeah, no, we're, we're looking forward to it. So uh, it's going to be pretty hectic once we arrive and then ripping into things. But um Hopefully, uh, get to spend a uh, Christmas with the kids. They, they all reckon they're coming over. Good stuff. And the other thing, next time we have you on, it's uh, it, the secret is out about your guitar playing. So we're going to ask you to bring your guitar, and you're going to be playing your your go to tune next time you join us on Rugby Nation. Yeah. Uh, good luck with that, Nick. <laughs> Yes, I suspected so. Hey, Dave, thanks very much. And and seriously, we just can't wait for you to get your feet on the ground here and, and get stuck in. There is that sort of excitement I think we're all starting to feel about not only Super Rugby AU uh, cranking up, but also what that's going to lead to in terms of, you know, potentially, who knows, four Bledisloe Test match, maybe, you know, the Rugby Championship uh, is still a possibility as well. There is so much to look forward to. Dave Rennie, thank you for your time today on Rugby Nation. Beth, thank you. You'll be busy over the weekend uh, with your eye across those games. As I said, there is a lot to look forward to. And uh, and thank you for being a part of Rugby Nation for yet another week on rugby.com.au. <laughs> Thank you very much.